Let's read 2 Samuel chapter 13. You are familiar with this. We've visited this a few, few times. 2 Samuel chapter 13. All right, 2 Samuel chapter 13. Okay, let's read chapter 13 verses 1 and 2 together. Chapter 13 uh, verses 1 to 4, sorry. Verses 1 to 4 reading. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister, Tamar, for she was a virgin. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimeah, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, Why art thou, being a king's son, lean from day to day? Will thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. May God bless the reading of his word. Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for a safe journey to thy house despite the rain and gathering us at the end of the week to study your word. Father, we come asking again for thorough cleansing and washing in the blood of Christ. Knowing, O oh God, we have sinned against you in many ways. May you show to us that we may repent. And Lord, we also ask that you would be with every group, help all teachers of your word to feed your lamb tonight. And as we study this topic on boy-girl relationship here, Lord, may you build convictions in our heart, not only that we understand, but Lord, we know why we ought to live so, and it is your will for us. So help us, O Lord, to remove all tiredness. We ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so now this, we've covered this passage many times in the past when we covered on boy-girl relationship. Here is David, one of David's son. Well, David had many wives, which was wrong. David had different wives, which was wrong. God was against that. And as a result, he had many sons also from different wives. And here is one of his sons, Absalom, who loved, the Bible uses the word love, loved his uh, half-sister, his uh, stepsister, very much. So much that he cannot eat, cannot sleep, and he lost weight. All right? And he was, that was how much he loved her. But we know that later on, was it love? It was not love, right? He did terrible things to her. So this was not love. Now, we, as we learned that, we learned one very important lesson. What we feel and think is love is not necessarily love, right? Okay, so in BGR, that is something we want to cover. Now, not only that, <coughs> um, if you have a question sheet, I want to do some revision first because we have new people and I think it's important that others also learn because we have to build the basis first. Without the basis, carry on today, maybe something that you may not accept. What is BGR? Phoebe, what is BGR? Burger. McDonald's or Hungry Jack's? BGR. What is BGR? Boy-girl relationships, all right? Boy-girl relationships. Now, question number one. Let's do a quick revision. Now, why is it not advisable at all for one to enter into courtship when you are still a student? Why do you think so? Maybe I ask people who have not attended before. Aaron, why? Don't know. All, many of your friends, students, they have girlfriends, boyfriends, right? Yeah, many. So, don't know. Uh, let me see who else... Michelle, why? <laughs> yes, Michelle, why? Um, you think it's fine? Fine or not fine? To an extent, I think it's okay. To an extent, what is the extent? Um, if you guys are going close and going out, I feel that it's fine, as long as you're not crossing the line, but you're over like smooshy. Alright, as long as you're not crossing the line, getting into physical uh, relationship, that's fine. Okay, so let's hear others. Uh, Jemima, you didn't attend as well. Do you think it's fine or not fine? You want to change it? No. 
Do you agree with her, your neighbor, or not? Mm, I think, like, as a street, because, like, courtship, you're, it's with the purpose of entering into marriage. So, with a student, you might not yet be prepared for that. Okay, so Jemima feels that, well, since you're a student, uh, courtship is for the purpose of marriage. Then if you're, not stu if you're still a student, then um, doesn't make sense. You're not ready for it. Okay, so that's another view. Uh, who else? Josiah. Young man. Okay or not okay for student to enter to date, have enter into courtship? You agree with your sister. <laughs> okay. Agree with your sister. Now, maybe... Um, okay, let me see who else. Wait. Uh, I forget the visitor's name. You are... Rebecca. Yes. Rebecca, your sister is not here. Oh, okay. Rebecca. Rebecca, what do you think, Rebecca? As a student, you have priorities. Okay, Pri what are your priorities? Study, education. Okay. Okay, you can study with, with your boyfriend. Hmm? Okay, so yes, different views. Ah, Jeremy, <laughs> you're a working person. You look at all the students. Do you think they should be in? No. Why? <coughs> if, you, if you're looking to get into a marriage while you're studying Looking to get into a marriage while you're studying? It's, it's not, it's, it doesn't connect, you know Doesn't connect? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, doesn't it's connect Not right face in life yet. Not right face in life Okay, it doesn't connect means it doesn't make sense Okay, last one What do you think? What do you think? Okay. No. All right, no. Why no? Boys are silly, right? At their age. <laughs> okay, so, so we covered a series on this. So you can go watch the video. Now, first, of, first and foremost, the Christian have to understand our worldview of courtship. All right? The world has its own worldview. Now, for the Christian, our worldview must always be courtship is for the intention of marriage. Right? For the intention of marriage. So, I think by and large, even you would feel, or even unbelievers, maybe some would feel, why am I in a courtship? Why am I dating? Because I'm interested in this person for the purpose of marriage, correct? So because of that, yes, many of you, though you did not attend, you have the biblical understanding, if it is for marriage, then students at your age, are you ready for marriage? You are not. Then should you be spending your time um, in that activity which you are not really ready for at all? That's why we say, um, or maybe I put it this way. Let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Very quickly for this revision so that we can move to our new topic. Ephesians chapter 5. Now let us, let us read Ephesians chapter 5. This is about marriage, right? Ephesians chapter 5 verses 22 um, to... 31, 22 to 31 reading. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the saviour of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be sub to on her own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church, and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it, with the washing of the water by the word, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church, 
not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives, even as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, for no man ever hateth his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Now, you look at this passage. This is what the man should be, and this is what the woman should be. As students, you just look at that. If you're courting in a dating, you're dating a boy. As a student, you look at what a man who should be ready for marriage, ready for courtship, should be. Do you think the person will fit this situation at that phase of life? Most students are not even stable at their character, right? But they are called, dating is entering into a relationship with someone who you think has these qualities and you will marry. You look at the man, verse 25, ready to give himself to die for you, ready to sanctify you spiritually, make you a spiritual woman, ready to present you as a holy person to Christ, lead you, guide you. Husbands, in verse 23, is the head. Look at the boy. He can't even take care of himself yet. What are you talking about? This person is ready to be in a relationship for a purpose of marriage, right? So it doesn't make sense. Likewise, for the woman, the character, the stability, the submission, many things, the stability of character is not there yet. Now, but yes, but you say, well, maybe the person will develop. And that is the whole problem. Um, Aaron, do you have many friends who break up, make up, break up, have another boyfriend, have another girlfriend? Uh, or at least you think it's common? Not really, not many boyfriend, girlfriends. Well, very common these days are actually boyfriends, girlfriends breaking up, making up, finding another boyfriend, just changing, changing, changing. All right, you go through a lot of pain, a lot of heartache. Actually, Cornelius was saying at his age, you have friends who spend time, break up, at this age, how old are you? Uh, 13. 13. In that kind of turmoil. So it doesn't make sense. That is why it is not ever advisable. But, well, Rebecca brought up a point. There should be priorities. Then I, I should have priorities. Now the thing is, relationships, they suck up a lot of energy and pain and emotional trauma at that age because you're not stable. If you're honest, it's true. Even adults struggle with these things. As students, many of these go through a lot of turmoil. You admit it, your friends, one day very happy, walking on clouds, next day argue with the boyfriend or girlfriend, then bad mood, right? Go through a lot of emotional roller coaster. But then, what should your priorities be as a student? So Rebecca brought up one example, studies. That is why you are called a student. All right, that's why you're called student. It's a time where you focus on studying, on studying. Right, you know, you want to spend your time chasing girls? Spend your time studying, you're a student, right? But for the Christian, you're not only a student, you are a Christian first and foremost. Okay, so Josiah, you agree with your sister. So, yes, does it make sense? Now, then, I should, as a student, have priorities. Study, yes. What else? Josiah. Play badminton. What else? What are the priorities? Grow spiritually. Grow spiritually. Very good. The priority at your student life, Enoch, is what? You didn't hear. It's to? Couldn't hear. Grow spiritually. It's a time to grow spiritually. All this relationship which is not for you at this time will distract you from growing spiritually. Right? So that is the other reason why it is not advisable. It doesn't make sense. The world at young age already have boyfriend and girlfriends. Does it make it right, Veronica? Just because the world, this is normal in the world, does it make it right? Right. It's normal in the world. Everybody have boyfriend and girlfriends. Does it mean it's right? No, 
right? Just because everyone does it doesn't mean it is right. So the Christian must understand it. So that is why um, we encourage that. But I'll come back to Michelle's point later. Now that is why we, we teach that. I think it's, um, it's, it's what um, is safe for the Christian at that age. Right? There was a question? No? No. Okay. So question number two, quickly, revision. What should you focus on before you are at a suitable age for courtship? Yeah, we already said. I should focus on my spiritual growth. I should focus on my spiritual growth. Anna, why should you focus on your spiritual growth at this time? Are you going to stop focusing on your spiritual growth later? No, right? You continue to focus on your spiritual growth. But why do you focus on your spiritual growth at this time? At this time. Before the age of courting and all that. So you know what to do when you start courting. Alright? So, now this is you. Right? At this young age. As if you focus on growing spiritually, by the time you are at the age, no, I'm not saying you're holding hands, huh? somehow it turned out like that. I'm just saying boys and girls, alright? Boys and girls. By the time you grow up, you are spiritually ready. You're spiritually ready, spiritually ready to enter into a relationship. That is very important. So, by then, you already know how to, what to do, what to choose, how to choose, and all that, right? So, it is very important that you spend your time growing spiritually. But Jennifer, is that the reason why you want to grow spiritually at this age? No. What's the reason? To obey God. I grow spiritually now simply because I want to constantly obey God and grow up to be a Christian that is that pleases God, right? So it is not just for that, alright? Obviously. So, in other words, the point is this. It's just one of, the thi- one of the many things in your life. One of the many things in your life. Preparing yourself spiritually so that if God wants you to be in a relationship, you're ready. But it is just one of the many things that God prepares for you in your life. Okay, so don't let that be the key focus. Okay, I want to grow spiritually because I want to be ready when I have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Alright, so that is the reason why. That is the reason why. Now, if all the boys don't grow spiritually and all the girls grow spiritually, by the time we grow up, next generation, there will be no spiritual men for the girls to choose. Opposite is the same. If all the guys grow spiritually and all the girls are just worldly and they don't care, by the time they grow up, same, the boys will not find any spiritual ladies. All right? So it is important that both grow. So by then, God will bring you together if it is His will. Now, if you are in relationships, if you are in relationships, all right? if you are in relationships, instead of being able to grow spiritually, always you have, you'll be going through turmoils. Turmoils, you won't grow spiritually. In fact, you will be going downwards. You'll be going downwards. Right? That is why it doesn't, it is not um, advisable at all. It distracts you. Now, next one. Next revision quickly, question number three. Why is BGR often a topic of great interest as well as debate? Why is it important to visit this topic again? Every year, we visit this topic at least once. Why? Why do you think BGR is often a, a topic of great interest? I think when we look at our YouTube hit rates, this topic has the highest hit rate, is it? Yes, true. Really? It's the highest hit rate. Why? Why do you think so? Alright, so I, 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 I move on from the back. Um, Joshua, why? Why do you think so? People do want to know. Okay. But they will have reload so many other videos about so many other topics. Why do they not want to know the other ones? What do you think, Justin? 
Why? Because it has to do with opposite gender. What do you mean? Don't know. Don't know what you mean. Shane, help your brother. Yes, because we live in an age where Christians themselves are constantly seeking to be in a relationship. They wonder, oh, any BGR topic, I'm interested because I'm interested in it. Now, hopefully, hopefully, majority of them, hopefully is they're thinking about it, but they want to know from the Bible what is a good principle. Should or should not, I'm willing to submit. Okay, so it is a very, very popular topic because it is something that young people at your age constantly face. Do you face peer pressure to have a boyfriend or a girlfriend? Now, next one. Hey, Josiah asked many times. Down here also. Caleb, do you feel pressure to have a girlfriend? No. Do your friends have girlfriends? Say again. He used to have a friend that has a girlfriend. How old are you? How old was he? Nine years old. Nine years old. Alright, so peer pressure. Alright, ask the older ones. Anna, do you have peer pressure to have a boyfriend in school? You know it's peer pressure? Alright, do you have peer pressure to have a boyfriend? Jennifer? Chloe? Hey. Phoebe. 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 You have pressure? Your friend said, Hey, Phoebe, how come you don't have a boyfriend? No? 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 Okay, meet the older ones in university. Go down. No, no, no. No one. Very odd. <laughs> well, uh, at least I know in some places it's very strong. It's very strong peer pressure. Um, everyone has a boyfriend, everyone has a girlfriend. And if you don't, they look at you like as if you are unwanted goods. What's wrong if you don't have a boyfriend? You must be unattractive. What's wrong if you don't have a girlfriend? You must have bad breath. Nobody wants you. Or bad character. Right? So, generally people feel if you don't have one, there's something wrong with you. So, everybody is interested in this. But I think there is another reason. At this age, at this age, do you think a lot of emotions go through the person? Usually. All right? That's why it's a topic that is very, very of great interest to people at your age. A lot of emotions. You're looking for a sense of belonging. You're looking for someone that you can spend time with, someone that you can love, someone who loves you in return. Now, all that kind of emotions, very strong at this age. Now, but let me ask you, if these emotions, what I'm trying to say is this, emotions are real, please know that. Emotions are real, emotions are real, they will also affect you at your age, okay? But the Christian must learn, if this is not the age, to let these emotions control me, well, these emotions should never control you. This is not the age to be in such a relationship. I should make sure that I suppress these emotions. Emotions are just emotions, they come. Does it mean that you have emotions, you must respond? Who's next? Sir? Uh, I went through here, I asked a few already. Uh, okay, CP, there's emotions. Alright, there's emotions. We can't deny that. So please admit that there are emotions. But does it mean that it means you must respond? If there's emotion means must be writer. Whatever age must be right. So I should respond to it. No. Right? It doesn't mean you need to respond. Emotions are very real. Emotions are very dangerous also. Right? So at your age you have to be careful. Okay? So there are emotions. That is why it's a very, very popular topic. Very, very common desire of people to want to know. Now, question number four. Now, let's start today's lesson. What do you think would cause you to give in to the temptation of being in a relationship before you are ready? In other words, while you're a student. What do you think is that thing or things that will, that will cause you to give in to the temptation? Try. Uh, Susan. 
All right. So, here is Susan. And then, in school still, still trying to grow spiritually. Then a boy in school keeps chasing you. Or a boy in church keeps chasing you. All right. Boy keeps chasing you. And then, you begin to have emotions. Okay? Now, what do you think is the thing that will cause you to want to give in? Ah, I'll just start the relationship. What do you think? I guess like you mentioned earlier, it's either peer pressure or Alright, so one, it can be peer pressure. Peer pressure. What else? Hazel. Not sure. Okay, Elaine is married already. Uh, married already. Um, Brenda. If you're not spiritually strong, very good. Now, if you're spiritually weak, if you're spiritually weak, you will give in to the flesh. You will give in to emotions. That is why we keep saying you got to grow spiritually. If not, along the way, you are going to give in. What else? Rebecca, what do you think? What will make you give in to... Ah, I'll just, I'll just, and I'll just start this relationship. Don't have. All right, Millie is married. Uh, who else? Okay, last one. Any question? You actually no. Michelle, what do you think? What will cause you to say, ah, just give in to this? I'll just start the relationship. Curiosity. Curiosity. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, curiosity. Everybody is in a relationship. What is it about? Okay, la, just start her. Alright? Just start her. Now, now, at the end of the day, it is just simply giving into your flesh. Alright? Now, remember one of the things that we talked about in the book of John. If any man will follow me, let him. Okay. They can pick up his cross. Let him take out his cross. Taking out his cross is actually crucifying the flesh. Right? The cross speaks of crucifixion. The flesh is really giving in to the flesh desire. The flesh desire can be well, peer pressure, it can be um, um, curiosity, um, and it could, it just emotions. Uh, I just give in to my emotions and all that. So, these are things that, that causes us to want to just Never mind, I'll just give in. Now, on the basis that you agree that students, does, it doesn't make sense for you to be in a relationship while you're a student. Okay, on that basis. Now, actually, I speak to parents. Parents, some parents are present. Your children are very young. Why do you think, as parents, children, your children would seek relationships? Why do you think? Maybe I ask, uh, where's the oldest child here? I don't know. Don't have. Ah, actually, yes. What do you think would make your child, when they become young teens or teenager, want to be in a relationship? They they are looking for all this. They are looking for all this. All right. Very good. They can't find it in their family. They can't find emotional support. They can't find closeness. They can't find um, love in their own family. And as a result, they very quickly and easily attach onto anyone that will show that kind of emotions to them. Actually, Millie's children is the older. Millie, any input? What do you think? Young people, why do you think they're looking for relationships? So many of them. They feel bored. Yeah, they feel bored. You know, home is boring. So all these kind of things. Same for Julia, I guess. Julia, any, any, any inputs? What do you think? They can't communicate with the parents. When I talk, they scream at me at home. Whenever we talk, it's screaming match. Uh, Kenny. <coughs> 
want to follow the world. I want to follow the world, yes. Why do they want to follow the world? So that they... Um, no, it has to do with family. Uh, family. Mm. Because there's a lack of role model at home to follow, right? There's a lack of a role model at home. Now, all these things parents need to be aware of also. <coughs> You have to make sure that you provide the environment where they will find that closeness. They will have a family, they will have love with the mother, with the father, with siblings. That environment is very important. Um, with the parent. So, if you don't have that at home, it's your excuse to go have a relationship. Obviously not. All right, I'm saying it's important that parents are also aware of that. But children, don't blame your parents. My parents are not loving, so I found a girlfriend that is very loving to me. I found a boyfriend that loves me. It is still an excuse, alright? So, now, now we come to this one thing. Okay, so this is the key thing that I want to focus on today. Now, we know that when you are a student, it is not the time to have boy-girl relationships, right? Focus on your spiritual growth, focus on your studies for the Lord. But what kind of situations would cause a person to, to give in. All right, we, we, we spoke about a few already. We spoke about a few. Outside those, outside that few, somehow you have, you have friends, and then after some time, the two friends become boyfriends and girlfriends. She know who hands still. Right. Become boyfriends and girlfriends. Alright? They did not intend to be. Maybe I put it this way. Alright, CP is very, 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 very uh, stoic. Always very stoic. You know, poker face. Very stoic. Very matter of fact. Then one day, we met CP in university. CP has a boyfriend. Alright? What do you think? could have caused that. Besides all those things we, that we talk about, I think this is probably one of the very dangerous ones. What do you think it is? Oh, is CP nodding her head. What? What would make CP suddenly become so emotional? When you're so logical person. Hmm? Oh, nothing. <laughs> Unless the boy bring a lot of dogs and cats. And <laughs> <laughs> um, like they take from all the... All yeah, besides those. Um. Now this is the one that suddenly CP... Hey, I also don't know, I'm in a relationship. Of course, over time, uh, not overnight. Uh. Oh, so it's like, uh, over time. It's just over time. Over time. Keep on being close to someone specifically. Keep on... Being close to someone specifically. Keep on being close to someone specifically. Exactly that. You're very clear in your mind. No, everything, no. No. I don't care about peer pressure too. Peer pressure has no effect on me. Rolls off my back. Hmm? My family loves me. But over time, you find Christians actually in BGRs. When they're teenagers when they are early stages of their studies and all that. What happened? So I, I asked you a question number four. What do you think would cause you to give in to the temptation? Now, actually question number five, sorry. What kinds of friendships, relationship can lead to such a situation for a student? All right, so she used the word close. She used the word specific. Specifically close with one person. Of course, we are talking about opposite gender, right? 
someone of the opposite gender. Now, what are the things... Um, uh, hey, how come we are suddenly there again? What, okay, Susan, what are the things that happens like makes two person in school become close? Okay, what do you think? Enoch, what do you think? In school, then suddenly we became very close with another girl. Always doing things together. Don't know why. <laughs> they, are, they are just sitting there, very interested, but don't know what's the big deal with these adults. <laughs> Jennifer, what do you think? Who make you become close? Okay, Jennifer, do you agree that you should have a boyfriend at this age? <laughs> She's confused with my question. You should not have, I know, right? But, but what, would, what would you be doing with someone all the time in school? They suddenly become very close friends and then suddenly you want to be in a relationship or you end up in a relationship. What can you think of? Same classes. Okay, you go to same classes. What happens in the same class? Say again. Friendships. Okay, friendships in the same class. Friendships in the same class. But maybe ask Rebecca. You go to school, then then a, a boy is in the same class as you, then keeps keeps sitting with you, talking to you. It's just friendship, right? In the same class. After some time. Can you become very close after some time? Yeah, you can form a deeper friendship, right? A deeper Friendship, specifically, this is the deeper. But, right, your mommy say, no, no physical contact, right? Then you say, you, mom, of course not, right? Of course not, you know? And in the initial part, that's how we feel. All right, so close, close, and say, no physical, nothing physical. Anyway, I'm not even attracted to the person physically. Hmm? But we are close friends, right? Now, do you know that there is a name for this kind of relationship? What is it called? Okay, next. Uh, Elaine, what is it called? <laughs> is it called what? Platonic. Platonic relationship or platonic friendship. Platonic. Platonic. Platonic named after guess who? Plato, right? Name after Plato. You're going to read the history. Uh, name after Plato. Now, platonic relationship. Now, what is a platonic relationship? Now, platonic relationship, there are many definitions, but all pretty much the same. A platonic relationship is one where there is caring. All right, so you want, to, you want to answer, what is a platonic relationship? Oh, because the, the, the answer is there. Question. Did you see the answer before that? Oh, you're reading a question. Okay. okay. So platonic. Now it is um, wait, where? platonic relationship where there's caring, concern. Right, question number six. There's caring, there's concern. Um, there is non physical expression of love, for example. Alright. So it's displayed through words, through body language, time spent together physically or through media all right now it is an, an, an affectionate relationship affectionate relationship where the physical attraction or sexual element does not come in all right so the physical um, relationship does not come in Now, and in platonic relationship, we can continue writing. Platonic relationship, um, they, they play a supportive role to each other. They are supportive role to each other. Providing advice, encouragement, comfort. Okay, I, I'm taking quotation. I, I, I didn't make this up. Um, to, to the other person.
Okay, but it does not entail exclusivity. It does not entail exclusivity means it does not mean that they are they can only be close friends with each other. Okay. Okay, so I give you some more because many people write about this. Now, now it's a special kind of emotional and spiritual relationship, platonic relationship. It's a special kind of emotional and spiritual relationship between two, piece, two persons who admire each other, have, admire each other, have common traits, common worldview, right, common traits, common worldview, and a special connection. <laughs> All right, so they talk connection, but it does not involve the physical, um, uh, physical intimacy. Okay, so now by and large, this is what the world, in the popular sense today, define as platonic relationship. Okay, so one of the things that the Christian have to be aware of. You may come to church and you say, yes, now is the time to grow spiritually and all that. But while you are focusing on all that, then suddenly ting, someone happens in your class next year, appears in your class. Or even for adults, happens at your workplace. And then you just find that hey, we, we click, you know, people say we, we somehow click. There's a connection. We have common interests, we see things the same way, we have the same likes and dislikes, we have the same values, um, and we can talk to one another very comfortably hmm? and do things together. And we like doing things together. We are talking about, we are talking about opposite gender, all right? Opposite gender. Now, that is what the world say, oh, they are... They are seeking a platonic friendship, platonic relationship. That's why even people who are married, they can say, or people even in courtship, they can say, oh, um, we are in, although I am married to someone, but at work I have a platonic friendship, platonic relationship with my colleague who is opposite gender. Because you say there's no physical intimacy, it's just that we just can connect, we can talk. And we like the same thing. Now, I'll ask you the next question first, huh? then we continue. Um, question number seven. What is the difference between platonic relationships and other friendships? Okay, now come back to here. I uh, want to try. Veronica, what's the difference between a boy saying, I want to have a platonic relationship with you, versus another boy who says, we are friends? <laughs> huh? I don't think people will go, I want to have a platonic friendship. Oh, they may not say the words. Huh? They may not say the words, have, have. Have. They say, okay, we are very close, okay, we are very, very close friends, but we don't have any physical relationship. Have. Have. You never encountered before. All very common. Is it very common. different from being like, we're like siblings? We are like siblings. Yeah, is that a form of platonic Yes. So some say, we are like siblings. You know, we get along so well. Okay, we be brothers and sisters, all right? Okay, we be brothers and sisters. We, now we are talking about especially your age, yeah. Not that age, not 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 like not like uh, not like faith's age, eh, a grace age, all right? Not like grace age, kind of thing. Okay, so they are quite common, even at workplace, quite common. They may not specifically say, "I want to have a platonic relationship," but at some point they will say, "Hey, you know, we get along very well. We're very close." But but I want but 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 I want you to know that um, nothing physical, all right? Nothing physical, all right? After work, we go for a drink, and then we do projects together, but, but we do things together, but no, nothing physical, all right? We are just friends. Quite common, quite common, all right? Quite common. So, they say, all right, so just friends. Now, what's the difference between that and a friend? What is the person saying? Do you get my question? What is the person saying? All right, the young ones are very... Okay, Aaron, what is the person really saying? Don't know. <laughs> Never encountered. Jeremy. The line is drawn. Okay, we draw a line. But my f we draw a line, nothing physical. Not the fact that they must say nothing physical and we're drawing a line. Yes. What do you want to say? Oh, uh, 
Yeah, essentially it was just uh, already admitting that it could have been something. Yeah, it's, it's not more kind of admitting that it actually it could lead to that, but we don't have that, all right? But you know, we, we, we really click so well, huh? like we are soulmates. Huh? We really get along so well. Now let's not spoil everything, let's remain as soulmates, good friends. That's one. Or they may say, well, maybe later on in life, then we, then we, when we are at the right age, then we enter into courtship. But now, we are like soulmates. Okay? Okay? So, do ordinary friends say that? No, I, no, I mean, if once you <laughs> say... Okay, I think maybe, maybe, maybe as... Hazel, are you following my, my trend of thought? No. You don't think so? Now, my question is, what's the difference between platonic relationship and other friendships? Does normal people, normal friendship? Alright, will, will, will Vincent, who maybe get along with you, oh no, you're always taking the same car, right? Will Jeremy need, will Jeremy need to tell you? Alright, uh, Hazel, uh, nothing physical, alright? Nothing physical. Alright? Or do you need to have nothing physical, alright? Do you even think of saying these things? All right? You don't even think of needing to say these things. All right? Platonic relationships are, there is, it is not just ordinary friendships, but it is an acknowledgement. We are close. There is something more than ordinary friendship. But we want to make sure that we state this friendship cannot lead to anything physical. Okay? So platonic relationships are not just like ordinary friendships where you get along well with someone. Now, Shane, why are you smiling so much? No, I'm just really confused. You re still confused, ah? Huh? Okay, boys are like that. <laughs> Shane, Josiah is so confused. No. Okay, you ask him afterwards. <laughs> now, what I'm trying to highlight is this. There are relations there are friendships that build that you have to be aware of. The Christian have to be aware of that you can become very close with a person of the opposite gender. And this is not an ordinary friendship. This is a friendship where you have to state we should not get into anything physical. Okay? Because ordinary friends don't say that to you, right? Neither do you need to say that to someone. After we finish fellowship, when you come over to talk to Michelle, do you say, nothing physical, huh? I'm just talking to you. You don't need because if we all know we are ordinary friends. But now they both person acknowledge there is a closeness that is outside ordinary. Okay? Now, you need to be aware of this kind of situation. It may not even come up to say nothing physical. But you have entered into a friendship which in your mind, in your mind you say, I must be remember not to end up in a physical situation with this person. In your mind you know. You may not even say it. But you have now a very, very close soulmate friend that is the opposite gender. Can be a Christian, can be a non-Christian. Now, but because you say nothing physical, right? And I won't let this be physical because it has nothing to do with marriage, courtship or anything. This is just close friends. I'm not even wanting to think of this person as, as someone physically attractive and I want to enter into a physical relationship in the long term when I get married. So none. It's that kind. What I'm saying is, there are friendships that can develop into this kind of friendship. And you need to be aware. Why do I want to highlight this? Uh, next person. Brenda, why, do I want, why is it important to highlight this? It's very easy to fall into this kind of friendships. Very easy. Alright, very easy. But the question is this. The question is, Is there anything wrong? So you know why this, but you know the difference. Now, what is the reality of yes? Question. But, yeah. Um, so then, is that case the non-physical platonic friendship mm. similar as um, the siblings? I take you as a brother or sister type of. Okay, I take you as a brother or sister. I think maybe this age they say it that way. Like girl or Mimi or whatever. Does that, does that go down? Yeah. Or okay. So so. Good question, which I also wrote down some things. So, is this the same as, I treat you like brother or sister? 
Now, then you maybe you describe a bit more why the person need to say that to you. Uh, do you, like just say do you do you normally anyone who wants to be a friend with you do they normally need to tell you I treat you like a sister. Let's say you have an age gap, mm. and then your personality type is like the cutesy cutesy sister type. Mm. Assume, I assume. Mm. And then the the guy is like the mature. This is so cringy, but like the guy mm. is the mature type. Mm. So then, because of your character and your personality, mm. then eventually you guys just treat each other like a brother. So okay, so like brother and sister. So the boy, the boy is the kind of like to take care of people, and the girl is very very uh, kiddy. I said, I come another one. I bring under my. My, 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 my feathers and take care of her but it's a closer one alright, it's a closer one than, than how we take others and also let's say the girl doesn't have an older brother and she always wanted an older brother she always wanted the older brother. Like older brother yeah, okay, so now the question is is remember platonic relationship is is how much time you spend together the kind of things you talk about with each other the, the, things, the, the things that you why you want to have that person close to you? Right? Now, so that is a good question, but the question next is always really deeply inside why? Why not another person? Why this person? And so on. Okay? Um, and is it wise? Is it wise? Now, so, yes. Mm. Mm. The line of thought with the Bible it says, the other, the gender, like as brothers and yes. sisters, right? How would you explain the How do you explain? Lines? Very good. First Timothy chapter 5. So that's one of the verse that we wanted to visit. First Timothy chapter 5. So we're kind of skipping a bit in front. First Timothy chapter 5. Because there's this koko chacha thing maybe in that church at that time also. Hmm? And then and then um, the Apostle Paul have to write to Timothy to tell him, hey, tell this kokos, ah, and tell this tetes. Ah. Koko and koko means brother and tete means sister. Tell them this. Alright, 1 Timothy chapter 5. Now let's read verse 1 and 2 together. Rebuke not an elder, but entreat him as a father, and the younger men as brethren, the elder women as mothers, the younger as sisters. Uh, got your answer? He did not put full stop. He put, he added the qualification. There seems to be there's this danger in church. Why suddenly bring it up? There is this wow, older sister or older brother, younger sister, younger brother thing that seems to be going on a closeness that Paul have to address and tell Timothy, the young pastor, make sure you teach the young men and the young women I'm not saying they don't talk to each other, I'm not saying they don't um, interact with one another, but always make sure you tell them in their heart with all purity of intention. Mm. Then with real siblings, mm. would they be allowed to have physical contact? Say again? With real siblings like Michelle and Mark, like, would they even have physical contact? Will real siblings, should real siblings have physical contact? Why are you smart laughing so much? <laughs> yes, because they're real siblings. They're real siblings. Really? <laughs> what kind of physical contact? What kind of physical contact? I think it depends on the age. And <laughs> why, you, why are you looking? Is it Josiah? Oh, oh, oh. I see her holding her arm. I think her hair was standing up. <laughs> She's going to throw up. All right. <laughs> what about Josiah? Hmm? Now, age. All right. So Grace and Enoch. They play as physical night, they may hug each other. But I think when you reach a certain age, there should be certain propriety also. All right? I don't think it's appropriate anymore for certain physical behaviors between brothers and sisters. How do we know? How do we know? Remember when Abraham spotted with, with the wife? Because Abraham can say, This is my wife, this is my wife. Isaac. Who's Isaac, right? Who was it? Abraham and the wife, right? Abraham lied to the other king. This is my sister. This is my sister, right? And then the king observed their behavior 
And then they say, this is not brothers and sisters. This is husband and wife. Even the world knows there is a difference. All right? So certain physical contact, I think at a certain age, you do not do anymore. Especially when, when certain parts of your body contact a lot, that is not appropriate anymore. You've grown out of that age. All right? Even schools, they know when they are very young, hold hands. After a certain age, no more hold hands and go for recess. They know it's not appropriate anymore. Okay, so certain physical contact. It depends what you're talking about. If, if you, are falling, you fall down, your brother help you out, that kind. But, but not arms in ways and like boyfriend, girlfriend walking around. I think there is certain appropriateness after, after a certain age. Okay, I think there is. It can't be you're lying in bed and your brother wants to jump on top of you. I think it's not appropriate anymore. Okay, even parents say no. All right, so that there are that kind of appropriateness. But, but so you got your answer? Siblings are brothers and sisters in Christ, but always purity of intention. All right, purity of intention. So if someone wants to be, I want to be a koko, then you see what kind of thing? This person only koko me, you know. But the rest, not interested. Do you think it's normal? Not very normal. All right, if, a person, if the person is generally always caring to everyone, in general, boys, girls, but if the person seems to always going after girls to be a big brother too, then you know it's a bit, a bit iffy, all right? a bit suspicious, correct? Same, um, so, so that. All right, so I think, answer your question, all right? So there is, there is, but always with purity. Now, now so my point in this session is this. There is this kind of thing that can happen even for a Christian with a person opposite gender in school. And you say, no, I'm against relationship. I'm against courtship, sorry. I'm against courtship at my age. I'm against uh, dating at my age. But this, this should be all right, right? Now the question is, in reality, what is a platonic relationship. So now we talk about question number eight. In reality, in reality. All right, so the, the point is this. People say, no, we are not in a courtship. All right, we are not in a courtship. We are not dating. It's just that we get along very well and nothing physical. We told each other already, nothing physical. So what's the reality of... When you understand the definition of platonic relationship, what is the real... What? In your mind, if you just take one big step back and say, actually, what is it? Wait, where am I now? All right, Rebecca, what do you think it is? People say all these things, but what do you think the reality is? Um, it doesn't always stay like that. Yeah. It doesn't always stay platonic, right? So that's the reality of the situation. The fact that we say, okay, we will be careful, we will be careful, we will be careful, already says that this is not just an ordinary relationship. You actually need to exercise constant restraint, control of your thoughts, emotions, physical um, contact and all that. This is not an ordinary one. And yes, by and large, the world also say platonic relationships generally don't work they eventually develop into relationships. By and large, it doesn't work. All right? Now, can there be genuinely, totally platonic relationships? Well, maybe there are. Maybe there are. But the point is this. Even researchers in the secular world know, by and large, it will develop into something. It will develop into something. All right? So by and large, it, it, it doesn't stay that way. What else? What, what do you think in reality it is? Ichung? A it's a precursor to a courtship. That is what it is. You are basically starting a courtship without entering a courtship yet. But you don't have to call it courtship, but you are really pretty much in a courtship. Now, let me ask you for the Christian. For the Christian. For the Christian, huh? we don't know about the rest of the world. If you are in a courtship, should you have a physical relationship? No. Correct? No. And it is a time where you develop closeness of thoughts, values, 
emotions, support one another emotion, um, emotionally, spiritually, edify one, all that kind of thing, right? That is courtship, correct? So, this is called what? <laughs> it's called platonic relationship, but in reality it is, you're in a courtship. So two things. One of the things is really, um, it doesn't stay that way. Two is, in reality, it is really a form of courtship. Now, what do you think some of the people do here? That in reality is really like courtship. Have you all known of this kind of friendships? I've known of several. Have you? Yes. What do they do? Read. What do they do? La? The, yeah. They go out together. Go out together. Dinner together. Eat dinner together. Yeah. Are they boyfriend and girlfriends? No, no, no. What else? They will talk to each other until very late. Talk on the phone. Right? Wow, very exact. The definition is through media also. What else? They spend all the time together. What else? Um, share like very deep thoughts. Uh, very deep thoughts. Share very deep thoughts. What else? Uh, a lot. Uh, a, lot. <laughs> a lot. A lot of things. Right? They do a lot of things together. Text each other. Text Bible verse. Uh, text Bible verse. I'm talking about opposite gender. Huh? Text Bible verse. Do I text you Bible verses? Jenny, did I ever text you Bible verses? Yes. I'm in a platonic relationship with you? Obviously not. <laughs> right? This is more than that. She knows. What would it become a platonic relation? What would it be when you're beginning to become suspicious? Every, every, other, every other 30 minutes or every day getting one encouragement message. No, with platonic relationship. I'm just encouraging, encouraging the sister in Christ. I'm encouraging the brother in Christ. Right? So it just goes on. Um, what else? Um, now, okay, Coco, it's just there, right? <laughs> the reality of platonic relationship. By and large, you are not as nice to your brother or your sister than to this person you're in a platonic relationship with. That is the reality of it if you face it. Alright, so many people say, this is just not real. But you don't want to admit that you have emotions, you want to be in a relationship, you know you can't, you should not. That's why married people say, I'm in a platonic relationship. They may, may not say, you know, my, my secretary, I, we just get along very well. But my wife knows uh, nothing. And they always say, nothing. Nothing means what? Nothing means we don't have physical contact. Huh? Right? Nothing. Why must they say all these things? To justify that they are not in a romantic relationship when they are. Correct? But you tell your spouse, nothing. So if you believe in platonic relationship as a student, then you must believe in a platonic relationship when you are married. Okay, how would you like your, your, husband, your husband say? Alright, Lee Chung says to Elaine, Elaine, you know, this, 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 this lady at my work, uh, oh, she's really amazing, you know. Oh, she cooks so well. And then, oh, we love to talk about biblical separation. Oh, every time we talk about it, we are so much in line, you know, and, and all that thing. Oh, she really is, is the same faith as us. And, oh, yeah, then texts keep coming in. Then you, then you, oh, wait, wait, let me text her. It's just platonic. How would you feel? No such thing as platonic relationship. <laughs> right? People who say platonic relationship, but once they're married, no such thing as platonic relationship. Because people know deep in their heart, there is no such thing. Well, there may be, alright? Maybe we can't, we can't say absolutely none. There may be, but it will be very, very small percentage. But the reality and the dangers are there. We talk about dangers afterwards. Now, why am I bringing this topic up? Because we have been teaching the biblical principle, and you all say, yes, no, no, no. But don't be surprised that one day, your course mate, you get assigned same project. You're always doing project together. Always eating at McDonald's together. Always doing things together. Then slowly start talking more together. Then sharing more things together. Then go and buy things together. Then all, all the while, platonic relationship. But all the while, yes, I don't agree with dating. It can happen. Do you understand why I'm doing this topic now? It can happen. It's the same for husband and wives. Same. This is what will happen. Slowly doing things together. That's why when I, when I was working, whenever I travel, I make sure that 
I don't have dinner with any, any uh, of my colleagues that's opposite gender. If you're on, on business trip together, I'll eat in my room. Even they say, hey, why are you so strange? Just eat together, you know, just a dinner. I say no, because there's always the danger. Remember, we start off by, by reading emotions. Remember emotions? Emotions are real. Emotions develop. Emotions grow. So this, you may be, it may be happening and you don't realize. You have to be watchful. You have to be very watchful. Alright, so, so you agree the reality? The reality is really there. So people like to bring up siblings, I know, so I wrote down. <laughs> yeah, unless you're so nice to your sibling, so concerned when your sibling come, when you say, I'm so stressed and then, oh, how are you? Unless you're so patient. Alright? <laughs> you know my own sibling? Can you just man up and just... <laughs> right? Same, you go there, oh, then... You say, Tete, can you just stop it? You know, don't disturb me. There is this special care, concern, counselling. Now, I, honestly, let's go to dangers. Now, actually, I, I remember one situation in my previous church. Now, this, do you think there is evangelistic closeness? And then he asks a lot of questions, and you keep helping, in school keep helping and all that. Are there those? In my previous church, yes. I remember one, one man, he had a lot of marital, relation, marital problems. And then one of, we went for evangelism, I think, or somehow, one of the um, university girls uh, evangelized him, then he, he proclaimed to get saved. Then his life seemed to change a lot. You know, and then he comes to church very regularly. Then later I found out, as their Bible teacher, I found out that they meet every morning in the office to pray together, early in the morning. Hmm? And then always texting, and then this girl is always counselling him, always encouraging him. Then when we ask, why you do that? No, you, he has a lot of marital problems. But we are really just brothers and sisters in Christ, I led him to Christ. So I'm counselling him. Hmm? Evangelistic relationship. All right? Then finally I said, no, no, no. Do not meet in the morning to pray in the office together. Just two of you. These feelings develop. He's a married man. Say, no, it's just purely spiritual activity. Why, why are you so angry at it? So they don't understand this. They ha you have to admit this. It happens. Then when I say, no, don't meet him to pray in the morning anymore. Right? And the text and all, let, let a brother in church take over, encourage him. Guess what? Very soon, not in church anymore. Not interested anymore. Right? But his life was really changed, you know. Even I was, oh, I was so impressed. But is it real? The moment you remove the gender, the gender, the gender equation, not interested anymore. Can you have a platonic relationship with another boy? You don't even need to say nothing physical, right? Boys and boys, be close, encourage each other, text each other, help each other, spend time together. But the moment you remove the gender equation, not interested anymore. Right? So it's fake. This platonic evangelistic relationship is also very dangerous. Now let's go to the danger. <sighs> Quickly, let's go to the danger. So maybe at this point I ask you, if a boy keeps coming to church, has not come for a long time, suddenly come, and then suddenly very interested in talking to you. Okay, boys will talk to you. Keep talking to you. Which one? I don't know. Hazel. Keep talking to you. Alright? At, at the fellowship hall, just, oh, Hazel only beeline. Yeah? Talking to you. Alright? Um, would you feel uncomfortable? What would you tell the person? I said, no, brother. But, but some girls feel, hey, no, it's not very kind. He hasn't been to church for a long time, so he's back, so I should help him. It's not very nice to turn him away, right? I should talk to him, I should encourage him. Looks like other people can't really encourage him, but somehow he responds to me. Some girls feel that way, and they feel bad. Some for guys. Same for guys. All right? Somehow, you know, they, they don't respond to, 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 to the other brother, respond to me. So, Pastor, I've got to continue to help her, you know. Should I leave her alone? It's unloving, right? 
be, be very conscious and very careful. Alright, be aware. Be aware. You should not need to feel... Now, if the person is, is generally talking to a lot of people, talk to you too and all that, that's fine. But somehow it's always, number one, either you or number two. If you're not interested, another girl, another girl, another girl, another girl. Then you know this person is suspicious. Correct? Okay. You think there are such people? Yes, there are. Even now, here. <laughs> Alright? People who say, I, who left church and say, ah, Christianity is fake, you know, all those things. Then suddenly come back, you know, Pastor, I'm looking for a wife. Oh, you know, can you tell me more about salvation? And suddenly, no question, suddenly everything except. Very dubious. Are there real cases? Maybe. But we proceed with extreme caution. Just get the guys to deal with him. Right? If it's genuine, it's genuine. And for how long? A few months. As long as it takes. Until we are very sure. Alright? So all these things are real. They're not a joke. Now, next one. What are the dangers then? Let's go to dangers. Question number nine. The pitfalls and the dangers. So imagine, uh, you go to school every day, do project together, talk together, text together, and all those kind of things. Now, what are the dangers? He said, but we are really just good friends. And anyway, the person is a non-believer, getting interested in Christianity. Now, next wait, question number nine. So what are the dangers? Let me move to this side. Joshua, what are the dangers? Say again. Hmm? Your heart can be moved. Alright, so from no, 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 just doing projects, no, just encouraging the person, just helping person, but romantic feelings, emotions start to grow. Start to grow. So that's one of the danger. I keep emphasizing in this area, why is it so popular? Because it's a very emotional subject, understand that. Because it's a very emotional, emotions, and you write this answer. Emotions are things that are very difficult to bring under control once you let it take its course. Do you agree? Once emotions, you let it take its course, it's very difficult to rein it in. That's why I asked you in the beginning, what are the things you give into your flesh? Because the emotions are there. So that, that is one of the things um, that can happen. I've known, I've known of, in my life, at least uh, one case, if not other similar, so one case, where this guy came to church and pursued this woman. Alright, pursue her like crazy, openly pursue her. Well, at least you have to respect, he pursued no one but her. Alright, he won't give up, it's always this one. Right? Others, he said, it's this one. Pursue and pursue. And then sh this woman came, she, he's the last person on earth I will ever get along with, let alone marry. I can't stand him. You know, she, she was so firm and everybody knew she was. She was. And she enumerated all the problems of this man. He's like that, like that. And we all say, yeah, we all know he's like that. Yeah, it's all these things. Keep chasing me. You know the story. They're married. Right? And then you know the story. Unhappily married. Hmm? I know of Bible college students. The guy come, well, very, like, very good. And then, pursue a Bible college girl, get married. And this is my, this is my cosmate, you know. Got married. And we say no. Keep telling her no. The guy was, like, very nice, very good. Guess what? They're divorced. Left her. And she has a baby. Right? Do you think it is possible not for your heart to move? I've seen with my own eyes, a woman who, I think I can use the word hate, <laughs> that man. But after pursuing, 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 emotions start to grow. Feelings start to respond. But the worst thing is what? Let me ask you. The worst thing is, you know what is, eventually you give in because you are in love with the idea of being in love. Do you understand that in love, I'm in love with the idea of being in love. I hate this guy, I can't stand this guy. But I just am in love with the idea that someone loves me and I can be in love, I can be in a marriage, I can... You're in love with a picture. 
Your love in emotion, not the person. That's why this kind of closeness is very dangerous. After some closeness, you start to say, oh, this thing happened, that thing happened. And you have this picture in your mind. Now, maybe i ask, next one. Where do this kind of idea of wanting to be in love, and then, what oh, we do things then, you know, my tumbler dropped, and then he bent over to pick up for me, and then your heart, <laughs> that kind of thing. Huh? <laughs> or you, you know, and then he came to class. Your your close your your cocoa and that's right? He came there. He just took. He 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 know that you like to eat. Uh, I don't know. You like to eat what avocado or whatever. <laughs> then you just put avocado on your table. Or leave avocado there. Then just wrote oh, no for you. Cocoa and that's right? Then your heart start to develop. But actually, you really have. You're not you're not attracted to him initially. You know, he has bad breath. His hair is not combed, you know, it's that kind of thing. You don't like him. Then all these little things. Then your emotions fail. Now let me ask you, why, where do young people get all these kind of ideas where it happened, then your heart flutter? Where? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> drama! Korean dramas, Hong Kong dramas, all those love soap operas dramas. And you girls get it from where? You don't watch drama, right? Do you watch drama? No, you don't watch drama. But what do you like to watch? Which channel? Tell me. Starts with D. Huh? <laughs> the cha cha that answer for you. <laughs> Disney Channel. Disney, you love to watch Disney. Now, let me ask you most of the Disney shows, except those about, even those about ghosts and devils, always has a theme of romance. And then all the songs. Right? All the songs. This afternoon, I watched one YouTube, someone put together, it's called Forever Disney Kids or something like Forever Disney Kids, it's made by, I guess, Disney Kids, are people, kids who love Disney it's, and they put 20, I know you're going to go back and watch now 25 top love scenes or something like that in Disney and then you watch, wow, one after another, one after another the one that always will be there is Kiss the Girl, Kiss the Girl, right? The Little Mermaid, Kiss the Girl I used to watch that and smile and now I think back, it's just a terrible thing. I used to watch that with my niece. Now I think back, this is terrible. They're telling children to be in this kind of relationship and kiss and outside, outside marriage. If I knew any better now, I should have been closing my, my niece's eyes and turning off the TV and throwing away the DVD. Right? This is where they get the idea from. Everything. They're in love with the concept of love. They're in love with all these things that they've watched and then they say, it's happening to me in my life. Emotions start to come in. Right? So don't watch this kind of thing. Really, seriously. Um, that's where you get all these ideas. And you will change. Now, next one. So what are the dangers that you can think of? Anyone? Wait, next. Uh, who's next? Okay, Justin. I just randomly issue. Justin. What are the dangers? Being drawn away from the Lord. Very good. Well, it will distract you. But can you be actually drawn closer to the Lord? Shane. Can you be drawn closer to the Lord? Drawn away, very clear. Very easy. But can you be drawn closer to the Lord? How? You could, uh? How? What do you mean, rather? Both of you are believers. Okay? And then? So when you meet for project, or you meet in school, or you meet for lunch, or when you reach home, you just keep texting each other, encouraging things. Then the person says, you know, today I was so discouraged, I was so sad. Then you, then you find Bible verse, text the person. You could help each other get closer to the Lord, right? Yes. Josiah, do you think that is wise? Or is that a danger? Don't know. Now, I already gave an example. Usually, it's very suspicious. Don't trust your own heart. 
I've known many boys and girls get closer to the Lord. I've known of cases where suddenly very active in church, very regular in church, and the person when I counsel it, no, you don't understand. You know, when I started this, I didn't used to love the Lord, and now I do devotion in the morning with her, I contact her, we're doing devotion, we pray, we cry, we're so close to the Lord, we love the Lord. The heart is very deceptive, right? But everyone in church could see that it's uh, not the relationship to be in and it's fake. Guess what? A few months time, broke up. What happened to the, I am so sure. In fact, I should say this. Very often this, I am so sure. Alright, so it moves from, from this platonic to I am so sure that this is God's will. I am so sure. A few months time, break up. What happened to the so sure? <laughs> Next one. I am so sure again. Alright. Emotions. Very careful. So if, if you're in that situation, it's always safer. You put your test to myself. Lord, I seem to be getting closer to you because of this girl. I'm going to break away from this platonic <laughs> relationship and test myself. Alright? But still dangerous, right? A test. Yes, I pass, I pass, I pass, just to get back together again. So search your hearts. Now, but what about this closeness? If you are not of the same values, not of the same beliefs and all that, especially with unbelievers, soon you will change, you know. You will imbibe their values. It's dangerous. You become like them. And very soon, your church sisters and brothers talk to you. You don't want to listen anymore. Why do you not want to listen anymore, Aaron? So close, these two persons got very close and all that. Then, church brothers and sisters say, hey, no, don't, you know, this person is not a believer, or this person is a Roman Catholic, or this person is a charismatic. But the person won't want to listen anymore. Why do you think it reaches that stage, which is very common? The other person becomes the priority. The other person is so important in your life already. You have reached that stage already. Of you just don't want to give up anymore. You will cling on to it, no matter what people say. Initially, you will not have fallen into it. All because of the concept, nothing, uh, nothing, nothing. You know how many men or women turn up, end up in an adulterous relationship? Because nothing at first. Okay? So, now, what are the, what are the pitfalls? Can you hurt another person? How? If the in the that platonic relationship, if one person has um, it is not equal, you know, the, the more effort they put in, you can say that one person says it's platonic, but another person. Yeah. yeah. Right. So one person can be really platonic. Maybe you are really platonic. Rebecca, Rebecca is really platonic. This guy, you know, I'm really platonic. But after, but he and you agree to be in that kind of closeness. He may develop feelings for you, right? Then after that, he say, Rebecca, I really want to marry you. Then say, Oi, I thought we said platonic. <laughs> but there's a lot of emotions already. You hurt the other person. Or you can be the person that will be hurt. You can be the person that will be hurt. Alright, so that, those are some of the pitfalls. Best is to... Now, if you are... We are not <clears throat> discouraging close friendships. But always build it safe first is with the same gender. But I am not saying this. And it's on record, video even. I'm not saying don't talk to each other. After prayer meeting, after fellowship, talk to each other. All right, we're talking about this kind of different situation. All right, so please, talk to each other. We do not encourage this segregation. Now, what are the pitfalls? What are the pitfalls? That you can think of? Mm, and, oh, very young ones. Anna, what can you think of? The boy keeps calling you, keep texting you, you keep doing, keep, go, keep running cross country together. What, what are the dangers? Like fall into something. Fall into something? Fall into courtship situation. No! <laughs> right, it's a famous. No, come on. Pastor, you are joking. I will never. Right? <laughs> Let's turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 10.
First Corinthians chapter 10. Okay, let's read. Let's read. Um, verse 5. Um, verse 5 to 9. Oh no, verse 5 to 12, reading. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples, to the extent we should not lust after evil things, as they do also. Neither be idolaters, as there were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication, as some of them co committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. And neither let us tempt Christ, as some of them tempted also, and were destroyed by serpents. <clears throat> neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for an example, and they are written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come, Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed lest he fall. Right? That is what, what um, Anna just said. It will develop into something. But people may say, no, no chance, no way. And even at that point of time, at this point of time, really in your heart is purely platonic. And you are very sure, I, I won't fall. I won't fall in love. I won't fall into fornication. I won't. Right? But God says what? Let him that think... Wait, verse 12. Let him that think, thinketh he standeth, take heed, lest he fall into love, fall into fornication. They fell into fornication. Don't think that you are better than those people. Alright? So, beware of this concept. I won't fall in platonic relationships. Okay, so, now let's move on quickly. So those are some of the dangers, for example. Anyone can think of anything? Question 10, quickly. Then we got to finish. Question 10. Now, why, should I, why shouldn't I have a platonic relationship to help me find someone whom I can enter into a relationship when the time is right? Why not? Right? Through this platonic relationship, Maybe hey, I'm, in, I'm in high school or I'm in first year in university. Hey, I found someone, no? Someone that's a good Christian, someone that's a very good character. Alright, I know I'm not supposed to be in courtship, but I wait, I'll wait, we'll wait. We'll wait. Alright, we'll wait. In fact, there's a question that's submitted. Ichun, can you read, read the question to us? Can you find it? Alright, so while he's finding, we'll, we'll, we will wait till it is time. And the person thinks, but, but you know, oh yeah, this church, you know, there are very few good guys out there, you know. Then if, if I found this good catch, uh, this good catch, or this good guy, or this good girl, uh, I found this good catch, we'd be platonic, we'd just be platonic, alright? We'd be platonic, swear by Plato, alright? We'd be platonic. <laughs> and then you tell me to, it is not advisable, it is not advisable. Someone will be platonic with him. <laughs> Ah, then I may lose my chance in the future. People think like that, subconsciously. Yes, the question? Um, it says, if two uni students have feelings for each other and think that it's God's will for them to be together, but they both agree that now is not the time to get together, can they still be good friends in the meantime? Okay, so who wants to answer that question? Okay, next. More often than not, end up in fornication. And you, and you destroy what God wants to be a very beautiful, wonderful relationship when the time comes. Right? Right? So it doesn't make sense. Um, so I hope I answered that person's question and the person is um, honest to accept that. Alright. Um, okay. Did someone call me? I, I prom oh, okay. I promise people not to turn off my phone unless for worship because sometimes people have someone passed away at home 
or emergency but I don't think it's an emergency right so sorry for the ex for, for the dis for the disruption now the next thing I want to say is um, so don't feel that I will lose out my chance all right young people don't feel that I found someone so good so perfect I will lose out my chance people change at your age people change can you I'm afraid if something had that happened to auntie auntie Lin if not you let him know Monday right people change have you met your classmates later on in life they've changed so much since they were young people change all right now next one the next question is this is it right all right so question number 11 is it right to pray for a life partner now even though it is not the right time Phoebe you want to pray God please bring the right partner for me to marry one day you want to pray now <laughs> why do I want to pray so should you pray now I guess now is when now but definitely not Phoebe all right now maybe your final year in university you're coming out to work soon all right you start praying God bring someone if it's your will few years time courtship and all that maybe time to get married but not when you're very very young what about in high school I think still a long way but can can you pray can nothing wrong with praying it <laughs> pray for the right reason when you are in first year in university can you pray can but if you begin to realize you're praying dead every day then you have to ask yourself what's happening in my heart is it something that i want so much in my life which one of you pray lord when i'm retired <laughs> you don't think about those things i keep thinking of pray why about marriage why always about marriage is it because everyone is getting married i'm afraid i don't get married i'm afraid i don't end up in a, in a relationship i'm afraid so god i keep praying this today you pray more than you pray for your for your family salvation then you know something it has become a what remember just now we read it was it became a idol to you it's idol now to get married to be in a relationship is now idolatry to you and god says they fell in the wilderness because of idolatry this thing has become an idol to you all right so be careful the more you pray for something the more you will think about it you can pray pray and leave it with god this is one thing that you you pray and leave it with god right you don't um, you can't arm twist god now but in this i want so any any other question any other input to this question yes any questions that follow for this question no now i want to say this but we don't have time but i, I want to close with this still i want to close with this still why do people pray about this because they want to get married they're afraid they don't get married is it wrong is it bad not to get married cornelius how do you know because if it's god's will for you to be married you'll be married marriage is one thing it depends on god's will understand that let's turn to first corinthians chapter 7. now i hope that young people you move out the world pressurizes us to think we must get married first corinthians chapter 7 and paul said please teach the church this all right so paul wrote to the church now let's read first corinthians chapter 7 verse 7 and eight together reading for i would that all men were even as myself but every man hath not this proper gift from god one after this manner and one after that i say therefore to the unmarried and widows it is good for them if they abide even as i now paul says that not being married is a good thing if it is not god's will for you to be married it is a good thing you don't have to keep praying for it the, you think it is a good thing and it's a thing that you must have because the world thinks so, so understand that the bible is very clear god himself said it is not necessary it is don't make this the thing of your life don't make this the obsession of your life it becomes an idol in your life now let's read further but is it wrong to get uh, let's read 
verse 27 to 28 reading, Art thou bound unto a wife? Seek not to be loosed. Art thou loosed from a wife? Seek not a wife. And if thou marry, thou hast not sinned. And if a virgin marry, she has not sinned. Nevertheless, such as will have trouble in the flesh, but I spare you. Now God says marriage is not easy. If it's God's will for you to get married, He will help you. Marriage is not easy. And if you are not meant to get married, you get married, it will be very, very tough. Alright? So, don't, don't, so that the person will ask, can I pray? Yes, pray like you will pray about anything else and submit to God's will. It's not something as, God, I want it. I must have it. Okay? Alright, so, conclusion and we close in prayer. Be careful of friendships that are very close and you keep emitting nothing, 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 nothing physical, no romantic feelings because the word is emotions develops. Understand that? If next time I ask you, what's wrong with, with platonic relationship? The reality is, emotions develops. Then you're in trouble. Okay? Let us pray. Now, someone asked, what is the difference between psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs? Someone also asked, can we just have instrumental music? Can, can we worship God with instrumental music?